All right, so thank you guys for attending the SUNY Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success session. Um, we have our presenter today, Nicole Simon from State University of New York, and I will let her go ahead and take it away. Perfect. Thank you. Apologies for being a little bit late. Okay, let me just quickly share my screen. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Nicole Simon from SUNY Nassau Community College, and today we're going to take a quick look at the Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success project through SUNY. Okay, so what is SUNY MTech? It's a very, very long name. Um, it's, again, Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success. We shortened it and we call it SUNY MTech because it deals with emerging technologies. It's designed to help learners gain lifelong learning and digital literacy skills through a very simple project that can be used in multiple formats. Next slide, please. Okay, again, my name is Nicole Simon. I teach at Nassau Community College in the STEM area. I'm also an instructional designer and an ed tech specialist, and our team consists of several different people, myself, um, Chris Marchese from Nassau Community College. And then, next slide, please. Also, Robin Sullivan and uh, Shri Van Putten, who are both instructional designers at both uh, University of Buffalo Libraries and Binghamton University. So when you talk about exploring emerging technologies, there are so many different choices. It's ever growing and there's always changing. So really, how do we keep up with technology and how do we know which to use and what to use? There's variation of purpose and certainly a variation of quality when we talk about emerging technologies. So when we take a look at MTech, we can look at the different ways that we can really explore and use these appropriately. There's two parts to our project. The first part is a MOOC, and we use the hashtag MTech MOOC, which is a discovery learning um, exercise to explore and reflect on how we use innovative and creative uses of emerging technologies. So that's the first part of our project. This is about the fifth year we've had this iteration. Um, there was a prior learning aspect to it before. What we're really dealing with is learning opportunities that are targeted to anyone who's interested in staying current in today's rapidly changing technologies. It helps you with career marketability, becoming informed digital citizens, improving social network abilities, especially well suited for college students and instructors. We've used it both in cohort models for professional development, and we've also used our project in classes where we've used different parts of the modules with the entire MOOC for digital learning skills for a student. It's a critical resource for both beginners and advanced users. Thank you. So the MTAG. Um, the MTech MOOC is a Coursera MOOC and provides online supportive learning opportunities for students where we're building out different learning resources and throughout the MOOC it's broken up into four different modules and the four different modules as you go through help to scaffold your learning about emerging technologies and how to use it in your discipline whether it's for teaching or learning or just for creative purposes. So what are these modules built on? They're built on lifelong learning and the four C's of the 21st century skills. So we have four different modules, lifelong learning, communication and collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. As you participate and go through the MOOC, it's designed so that, again, it scaffolds your learning and it helps you explore appropriate technologies using each of those different areas of the four C's of 21st century skills. Once you learn about it, you're invited to start to build out your repository of what you use, what you may want to use in the future for different emerging technologies. You learn about it, you assess your knowledge, you create an artifact, and you build up your skill set. When you're building up your skill set, it's designed to teach both digital and media literacy skills to help build out growth mindset, create a digital footprint and identity, help you with information literacy, learn about Creative Commons, accessibility, data privacy, and security. So how do we go about finding these different um, emerging technologies? We use something called the MTech Wiki. So this is the second part of the project. It's a socially curated wiki repository of both free and freemium available tools and resources. I say free and freemium because about 98% of the tools and resources on the wiki site are free or low cost if you want to upgrade. 
Um, we try to keep it as close to low to no cost as possible because we're all paying for a lot of technology and we want to make sure that we have access for everybody. We're using these different wiki um, tools in the discovery exercises through the MOOC. And it's an open website that's also available as a standalone record uh, resource. We have about 550 records to date against crowdsource. We're always building on it. About two thirds of the wiki are um, readily available emerging technology tools and about one third consists of different resources such as videos or articles or TED Talks to be used again with those discovery exercises in the MOOC so that you can learn and then use to build up your skill set. Slide please. So we take a look at a blow up model of what the wiki actually consists of. You can see along the mid part of the website that there are those four modules and we have it broken down so that it corresponds again back to the MOOC with lifelong learning, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. From there you can apply different filters to filter down, um, drill down to specific tools that you can use for the discovery exercises or you can change the categories for what your interest level may be when you're taking a look at building out your, your skill set. We also have a rating tool that we really highly recommend people to use the rating tool to help us learn about what are the best or most aptly used resources out there. And what we're doing is taking a look at our top 50 most readily used emerging technology tools and we're building them out so that we can take a look at accessibility, privacy, data security, and make sure that they're tagged appropriately and that they're being used appropriately across all disciplines. Thank you. We also invite everybody, because again, it's a socially curated wiki, to contribute. So you can always create an account on the wiki and add to or repository. There are guidelines that we use just so that you can help create a tool, add a tool, or if you see an error or a broken connection, we invite everybody to help modify those tools so we can keep everything current. We want to make sure that we can properly tag each of the different resources and classify them appropriately and make sure that they're as accessible for everybody. And again, once you're using the wiki, it also corresponds back to that Coursera MOOC. Thank you. So we're currently always improving our technology. And not only are we um, taking a look at our technology skill set, we also want to make sure that that corresponds back to the wiki appropriately by improving our taxonomy. And we're doing this by updating our keywords and our tags. We have certain special interest groups through the SUNY Consortium. We do a lot of virtual exchange worldwide through something called COIL, which is Collaborative Online International Learning. So we want to make sure that we're tagging appropriately so that it across disciplines, across platforms, and certainly across international um, alliances with our technology tools, we want to make sure it's available internationally. And we do that by tagging it with the virtual exchange. We want to make sure that we know what is more geared for K-12 or higher ed instructors. We also want to make sure our special interest groups keep in mind what is K-12 appropriate for students. I know New York State, we have something called New York State Ed Law, where we're very mindful of what can be used or cannot be used in the K-12 sector. We also have certain standards we take a look at, privacy and security, making sure that these tools are accessible and again, internationally available and that they're tagged appropriately. So when you go through the search features, you're able to take a look at which would work best for your needs. Next slide, please. So we talked about the learning process. Now that we've taken a look at that the MOOC exists and what we can use the MOOC for, and then we take a look at how the wiki corresponds to really help support that. We really want to take a look at the overall learning process where you're reading and reviewing and participating with the course materials in the MOOC. This allows you to help explore the wiki tools and resources and then complete the discovery exercises that correspond back to what you've learned. So you've learned about something, you've taken a look at what resources help build your skill set, and then you're sharing an artifact and reflecting in a portfolio. We have about 40 freely available ePortfolio um, technology tools that you could use on the wiki so that when you're building out your artifacts, you're using that for the discovery exercises in the MOOC. Once you've done that, you can earn, earn badges and then a Coursera certificate. Please. 
So what are some of the learner rewards? Other than just having a lot of fun and being a lifelong learner, you're able to create a personal aid portfolio, whether it's for a specific course or discipline, or if you're building it out for, I usually say for educators, you know, if you're doing this for a certain project or class, or when you're creating different lesson plans, build them out here. You can certainly earn Coursera Certificate of Completion and then SUNY Digital Badges. Who doesn't know their digital badges, right? But the intrinsic rewards are being a lifelong learner, and we want to encourage that. So MTech is free for all. It's free, full access, minus the certificates and badges. So you're able to take the entire MOOC in its entity. If you want to earn the certificate and the badges, there is a small fee associated with Coursera. If you are associated with SUNY, the State University of New York system, um, or anybody who has been a student, an alumni, staff, or faculty qualify, you do get the Coursera certificate for free. But New York State happens to be one of a few different um, entities that are looking at anybody who is considered underemployed or unemployed through Department of Labor. And you can earn a free certificate through Coursera and SUNY Digital Badges with the MOOC. A lot of other states are starting to take a look at this over the past two years. I know we've had a huge disruption in employment, and people are starting to take a look at what it is that they need to do to increase their skill set. So if you are interested, you could always check out your Department of Labor for your state and double check to see if they are offering this program for the Department of Labor for underemployed and unemployed people. Also, there's certainly additional Coursera promotions that are completely free um, and they're ongoing as well. But this really helps you build your 21st century digital literacy skills, which are crucial for displaced workers, underserved population, and those with low incomes who want to increase their skill set. So we always go through an explore and share exercise. And if you go to our website, uh, SUNY MTech, you can explore any of the different tools and tutorials and resources that help you meet your specific learning objectives and allows you to start building out what it is you want to learn about. So it's almost a customization when you go through the MOOC to learn about the different aspects of the 21st century skills and lifelong learning and then curate the best, most appropriate technology tools that help you serve those needs. So we do have a tremendous amount of impact. And there's a Bitly site that you can take a look at our impact. To date, I literally just got the numbers yesterday. This past week alone, and it's only Tuesday, <laughs> we had an increase in about 266 new learners and about nine completers. So that's a lot in maybe not even a 36 hour period. So we have tremendous impact globally. And if we go to the next slide, we can take a look at some of that impact. So here's a completely non-scientific enrollment as of mid-March when I pulled the numbers last. We have currently have about 32,000 learners. And you can see the larger the bubble corresponds to the larger amount of enrollees. So SUNY happens to be the largest because we're constantly promoting it and we use it for our classes. It's very big in Mexico. It's been very big in India. And in fact, Indonesia, um, their social workers and their social um, civil servants happen to use this to build their skill set during the pandemic, which is very interesting to see firefighters and frontline workers building their skill set using the MTech MOOC. So we invite you to share the information. Um, you can always go to the announcements area. There are flyers and small takeaways. There's a one minute video. You can find out more information to enroll right on our website. And we're always looking for partnerships and collaboration to share information about the MTech project, to contribute to tools and resources. Again, you can just create a very quick account on our wiki to help contribute to tools and resources and help our rating system. If you go through the entire MOOC and then you come back and help other fellows, whether it's in your, your cohort or future cohorts with their learning process, you can then earn another digital badge to become an MTech fellow. We're looking for scholarly researchers and grant writers. This was created on a grant and we're continually looking for more grant funding to keep the project going. Next slide, please. So I want to thank everybody. Our email address is right at the upper right, mtechmook at gmail.com if you have any questions. And certainly please explore the wiki and the MOOC and enroll. We'd love to have you. Thank you.